as I exited my teens, I stopped pursuing the extreme delicateness and daintiness that traditionally defined a girl's beauty. Instead, I started treating my body like a machine to tweak for longevity and performance. As such, its appearance stopped being a goal, but a natural byproduct of a lifestyle that sustains health and allows my body to perform its most innate functions better. Moving, climbing, jumping, pushing, breathing, and simply living. Going through this mindset shift was a confusing process, as for the longest time, every time I moved a little closer to new aspirations, I promptly found myself back at the starting point. It wasn't until I came across Susan Sontag's The Double Standard of Aging that I understood the origins of my setback a little better. For women, only one standard of female beauty is sanctioned. The girl, she writes. The great advantage men have is that our culture allows two standards of male beauty, the boy and the men. The beauty of a boy resembles the beauty of a girl. In both sexes, it is a fragile kind of beauty and flourishes naturally only in the early part of the life cycle. Happily, men are able to accept themselves under another standard of good looks, heavier, rougher, more thickly built. A man does not grieve when he loses the smooth on light, hairless skin of a boy, for he has only exchanged one form of attractiveness for another. The darker skin of a man's face roughened by daily shaving, showing the marks of emotion and the normal lines of age. There is no equivalent of this second standard for women. The single standard of beauty for women dictates that they must go on having clear skin. Every wrinkle, every line, every gray hair is a defeat. No wonder that no boy minds becoming a man, while even the passage from girlhood to early womanhood is experienced by many women as their downfall. For all women are trained to continue wanting to look like girls. I'm glad that our times have significantly evolved since Sontag's time and that women have started to appropriate the second standard that was once reserved only for men. Critics would say that women are becoming men, but I only see women cultivating strength and confidence that lead to freedom and independence, all of which are genderless aspirations.